<laughs> or he could tell you about his dog. Yeah, tell me oh about my God. Oh my God, Oni is so dogs. cute. He okay, smells like heaven. <gasps> he has such an amazing, uh, he's very well trained and um, just now he speaks. So when you say speak, he's like, rrr, rrr, rrr. very cute. <laughs> it's so very funny cute. when dogs try Makes to talk. Laugh so much. <laughs> I know, dogs are so funny <laughs> when they try to talk. Mm. Oh, are we live? <laughs> oh, hello. Hi. Hey, everyone. <laughs> And welcome. We are so excited to be here today. I'm with the beautiful and so talented and magical Anita Morjani. Hello, and I'm Emmanuel Dagger, and we're just so thankful for all of our beautiful guests and, and friends from all around the world tuning in today. If you have any questions, if you're feeling inspired to receive some support, just send a little comment to us and we'll make sure to uh, answer that. So what's our theme for today? What are we going to do? So today I thought let's let's laugh let's talk about laughter and fun and enjoying ourselves because you know how i often say and i often write about the importance of laughter because laughing is so much more healing than any medicine than um, any other kind of healing or mantra or meditation or chanting or anything laughter is like the best oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> and just when i hear the word laugh and giggle it takes me back to a time i remember um, i grew up catholic for a little while so um, i remember everyone had to be serious in church and all of a sudden in the most serious of situations i start giggling what is that have you ever experienced that <laughs> yeah i find it hard to be serious i used to be more serious oh my god see even talking about this <laughs> I just snorted. I just That's snorted on TV. I love snorters. Oh, oh my god. We're not on anything. Sorry. <laughs> no, we haven't had. We just had the most amazing lunch. We yes. just had. It was vegan. It was gluten free. Yes. But it was amazing. It was, it was really so good. Tasty. Thank you. Anita made the best food. And um, my favorite was the. Um, what was the coconut? Oh, it was a coconut vegetable curry. Oh, so good. Oh, so delicious. With quinoa. <laughs> mm, I think that may have been inspiring some of this high energy that I have right now. So <laughs> amazing. So let's talk about some ways that people can laugh and actually activate that within them. Because sometimes, you know, life can be a little bit serious and, um, you know, we're kind of doing our work and, and uh, you know, going throughout our day and we forget to laugh. So yeah. what's one thing that you can offer our audience to really just remember to laugh and that can activate that joy. Yeah, it's, um, I, I tend to laugh pretty easily because uh, <laughs> I tend to laugh at almost anything. And unfortunately, inadvertently, I have from time to time probably even offended people because I have laughed at things that I'm supposed <laughs> to take seriously. <laughs> Don't do that to me. <laughs> Oh my god. I know, and people think I'm making fun, and I'm not. It's just that it's really hard to take life seriously when you've been dead and back. <laughs> <laughs> you, everything, it's like, you know, you kind of look at people taking things seriously, and you're thinking, seriously? <laughs> When you cross over to the other side, you're going to look back at this and you're going to say, thank you for the experience. It's not going to be such a big deal. You know, one of the things that, as, as you were saying that, um, I love Mary Poppins because <laughs> in, there's a scene in there where there's like an older guy. I don't know who it is, but he's just laughing. And when he's laughing, he's up in the, you know, he like floats. Do you remember oh, that scene? I think I remember. And then Bert starts laughing and the kids start laughing. And Mary, she's very serious. And then eventually she's like, okay, I'll just go up there. And then she ends up having fun. But um, anytime I need a little boost, I'll go on YouTube and check that scene out. It makes me oh, laugh. Oh, see, that's a good one. So, see, so if there's any. <laughs> that actually makes you laugh make a list of the things that make you laugh so that when you're feeling down when you're feeling stressed go for that list and every time you find something that makes you laugh put it down on the list so now I'm not saying this to be mean or anything but my husband makes me laugh he really does and he's he's actually wonderful he has this wonderful sense of humor yes. and I am so blessed and so happy that he also can turn everything into into something to laugh about. So yeah. that kind of, I'm really glad about that because I was just telling Emmanuel about how one time I was invited to speak at a conference and 
And at the end of the conference, the organizers told me that I was too serious and that my speech was, uh, sorry, I'm sorry, the complete opposite. At the end of the conference, <laughs> the organizers told me that I was too funny and my speech was not serious enough and I should have taken it more seriously. And I, and, and I was really taken aback because I thought the audience really enjoyed themselves. And so, so that was kind of interesting. And, yeah. and, and, and I was never invited back again, but I was just Aww. telling Emmanuel that I was never Im invited back because I was too funny. <laughs> but you know, life is, is you know, it's kind of short if yeah. you think about it in the, in the grand scheme of things. So why not enjoy it? You know, you were talking about Danny, your husband, and I just think that makes life so much more fun when you have someone to share it with and laugh and, and just be silly. Exactly. And you know, when I, uh, and this seriously, when I crossed over on the other side, I did learn that the most important things in life is to love and to laugh mm. and to be who you are. Those mm. are the three most important things. Mm. And those were the three things that I wasn't doing before I before I crossed over, wow. before I died the first time. Because it gets conditioned out of us. We're afraid to love because we're afraid to have our hearts broken. We don't laugh because we take life too seriously. And we don't allow ourselves to be who we are because we're always trying to meet other people's expectations. Mm -hmm. And really, those are the only three things we're here to do. It mm. means to be who we are, to love and to laugh. That's it. That's mm. it. It's as simple as that. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. And you know, most people think, oh, that's too simple. It's yeah. too easy. But try it. See. See what happens when you just try those three things. Set the intention every day to just experience those three things. Laugh, love, and be who you are. And that's, that's it. <laughs> that's it. It's as simple <clears throat> as that. And, um, and when you allow yourself to really be who you are, you feel lighter and it becomes easier to laugh. Mm -hmm. The more you love, it also becomes easier to laugh. Life just seems so much lighter and so much more fun. And I'm not saying that we don't have challenges or that yeah. I don't face challenges. I do face challenges. But feeling um, stressed and feeling angry, they don't <coughs> make the challenge easier. They make it harder. They actually... They have no purpose. They really have no purpose. Mm -hmm. And the fear of the challenge, it, everything just adds to the burden of the challenge. Whereas if you laugh, um, you still have the challenge, but at least it's so much easier and so much, it's so much more fun to deal with the challenge. Mm. And I think you attract a better outcome if you laugh through it. Right. And you said it earlier, it's almost equal if not more powerful than meditation yes. and medicine and so when you laugh you know sometimes when you're sitting there meditating i honor meditation i think it's amazing but yes. i can't sit still for more than half an hour you know and, and that's just me um, i'm always wanting to do something so laughing in the morning or at the end of the day can really set the tone for the day or kind of clear some of the stuff that happened that day that was stressful yeah. it instantly starts to move you into more of a relaxed state so i'd love to offer the audience a, a tip a sure. little uh, very simple there's actually two so the first one is it's been scientifically proven that if you smile um, i don't know where i read this but a few uh, journals sort of confirmed it um, if you smile and just really showing the balls of your cheeks like this and just sit there for like 20 to 30 seconds, you'll start to feel, you'll start, <laughs> 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 you'll start to feel different. You'll start to feel. So take that out when you go to the grocery store. I mean, who cares what people think? Exactly. Just be like, and see what happens. You will feel better. I know I look probably so silly right now, but it just really makes a difference. The other thing is <clears throat> a little process that we that I did in Madrid is um, just closing your eyes and taking a deep breath in, just breathing in and just release. And imagine what it would feel like in your body if only your right eye was smiling. So just imagine just your right eye, like what it would feel like if you're smiling with your right eye. Then move that just gently to the left eye so that now you know what it feels like or what would it feel like in your left eye to smile. And when you get that feeling, go ahead and just move it so that both eyes are smiling. Just see what that would feel like in your eyes only. 
and then bring that down into your cheeks and just smile and as you do that go ahead and bring that smile down into your heart and imagine your heart is smiling and imagine it's like this little cartoon character of a heart doing a little dance and show for you maybe like a two for tea like doing like a tap dance or something just feel into that does that feel lighter just breathe that in and just thank it hug your heart thank it thank you heart for putting on this little show for me knowing that you can connect with it at any time just open your eyes ah how oh, do you feel that was good wasn't that it's so simple it's so and simple. it's like cheesy it. but it's fun it's really fun i think that's really cute thank and you. i like that idea of just putting on this cheesy grin on your face wherever you go right you know? right it just makes life so much better it really does i remember one time when i was um i forget which country i think it was croatia or somewhere and i was just about to um go on on a tv show and this the guy the host of the show he said to me i want to give you a tip I know it looks crazy, but every time you're about to go in front of the camera, um, I want you to put on this cheesy grin. And he did it. And all he did was he just literally, he goes, <laughs> and, and he said, it looks really cheesy. It feels really cheesy, but it comes out amazing on pictures. Wow. This is what he said. That's amazing. It always looks like you're having a lot of fun. So let's do a test. Okay. Let's show. Does that look better when we go like this? One, two, three. <laughs> I can't do it without actually giggling. I have to actually okay, giggle do... when I do it. Let's try it again. One more time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See, let me tell you my problem. My problem is that I can't look serious. That's not a problem. That's an amazing thing. Unless, well, you have to surround yourself with someone who can take care of the serious stuff. And I'm sure you have that. I so you can just be, you know. I know. Uh, my team takes care of the serious yes. stuff. Yes. Yes. So can we open it up now? Yes, to our... let's open it up to our, our <coughs> Are viewers. they just oh, crazy? Gosh. Are they laughing at us right uh, now? They're having a blast. Oh, my they God. They are loving this. Absolutely oh, loving the conversation. And mm -hmm. my makeup is just running off. You look face. beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> so beautiful. You were, were talking about meditation and there's a question about <clears throat> that. Jan says she wonders about meditation. People tell her she needs to meditate more and she doesn't want to feel like she's being pushed to do it. She loves going to the forest and the ocean and that feels like meditation to her. But then she starts to wonder, should I be meditating more? Ooh, can I take that one? Okay, so if it feels forced then you might as well not do it so that would be my answer to jan so um i always believe that there are no rules no laws no dogma nothing mm. it has to feel freeing and liberating and i find it hard to sit in one spot for a long period of time and some people are able to do it and they and they love it my meditation is going out by the ocean or going out in nature sitting in nature playing with a puppy dog oh. it's also listening to music and emmanuel has a beautiful dog dogs make me laugh and they make me connect with nature babies it could be connecting with babies find the thing that makes you feel filled with love you know i love beautiful mu music moving music mm. so there are many ways to connect so here is the bigger element of, of this, of, of connecting with the universe or connecting with your higher power. It is to actually go on an information detox because, um, and uh, I, yes, I really want to express this properly. We tend to live from an outside in perspective. Mm. And that means we take information from the outside and then we react to it. What I invite you to do is go from an inside out perspective. Mm. This is the reason why people meditate. It's a means to an end. But if you can attain that end um, in some other way, the important thing is to live from an inside out view. So what does that mean? It means um, tuning in to your higher self, your source, your own higher power, 
and living from that place, projecting that outwards, so you're touching other people, you are affecting the world, rather than having the world affect you. Mm. The way to do that is to filter the information that's coming at you. Go on a detox for 24 hours, 48 hours, and stop searching the internet, but do watch my, my videos, <laughs> and Emmanuel videos, but stop <clears throat> researching, stop watching the news for a while, stop doing all these things yeah. that stress you out. If you wanna go on the internet, do fun things, watch fun videos. Stop doing things that stress you out. Stop filling yourself up with information from the outside and instead get insights from the inside. Mm. So tune into your inner net instead of the internet. Mm. Now people believe that Can you say that again? Tune that was into really your powerful. inner net instead of the internet. Wow. But the other thing is people believe that information is power. I believe that insights are even more powerful. So the purpose of meditation is for insights, but you can get insights by going to the woods, by turning off the outer world, by going in nature, by playing with your dog, many, many ways. So mm. thank you for that question, Jan, I love it. Amazing, yeah. thank you for that answer. Wow, <laughs> the next question. We, my phone may not be refreshing properly. I'm not seeing more questions. I am seeing tons of love and appreciation. Yes. People are just so thankful for both of you. Um, but at this time, I'm not seeing any other questions. Oh, okay, wait, here comes one from Ariel. Um, the idea of laughing and loving every day is amazing, but how do you get there after heartbreak? Mm. Heartbreaks are, are tough. Um, <clears throat> any input from this side? Yeah, so, you know, they're actually not that different than each other because they are very much um, an emotion. It's a reaction that you're having. So the first step is to honor your heartbreak and give it the dignity and right to exist because a lot of us try to hide and bury our emotions and that actually creates a much worse reaction. It's like a volcano. So the first step is to love yourself through the heartbreak, the heartache, and once you do that, what will happen is you'll start creating space for yourself between you and the heartache where you actually are no longer needing to identify with it anymore. It's just a passing emotion that you're experiencing and then guess what? You're gonna have space to feel better and that's when you would wanna to start to laugh and you don't, wanna, you don't wanna try to force yourself to laugh if you're not feeling it, yeah. you know? Yeah, because it can feel a bit annoying if you're not ready for it. So the most important thing is to heal yourself first from yeah. the heartbreak and allow yourself the time. That's yes. great. Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Beautiful. Oh. We have another question. <coughs> Yay. Um, Penny asks if you have any quick tips to snap yourself out of fear. So to me, when you feel fear, it, it's an absence of love. Mm. And so the question I would ask myself whenever I feel fear is, what so it could be where am I not loving myself but a quick one is to ask myself what do I want to see instead so when you feel fear it's because of something whatever it is you know it could be because um, you're feeling fear about a particular job you don't know if you're gonna get it or not get it you're feeling fear about something that's coming up so you you are obviously fearing something some outcome you're fearing an outcome so the question to ask is, what is the desired outcome that would make me feel love and passion? So once you've established what you would like to see instead, then the idea is to focus on that. Make that part of your life bigger. Even if you end up, the, the result ends up being the one that you feared, what will happen is your mind will have started to work on creating the other outcome. And so you will actually have a direction to go towards, which is the mm. what you would like to see instead. Beautiful. I'd love to add something to that. Um, fear, a lot of people go in the other direction of it because it seems scary. But the truth is, fear is just a protection. It's, a, it's like armor. The mind goes into it to create the shell so that you can feel safe. So when you actually see fear, it's an indicator that if you step into that thing that freaks you out the most, you're gonna have a big breakthrough because that shell is gonna be shattered and your spirit 
is always protecting you, your I am presence, your soul, whatever you want to call it. Um, and that part of you is taking care of it. So your mind can take a break and enjoy life and have fun and laugh and experience love. And so fear is just an indicator that there's an opportunity for you to have an amazing breakthrough if you just step into it. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle asks, what is your advice for when you feel like your freedom is being held hostage by your mind? Mm. Mm. So it's not another person that's holding her freedom hostage, mm -hmm. it's her mind. Mm. So it means, what that means is that um, you are buying into beliefs that are not serving you. And there must be some kind of payback for believing that. Mm. And so the thing is, so this would be something where um, we would probably need to have more information, wouldn't we, yeah. on the actual situation? And what, I know. would ask um, whoever that, what was their name? Michelle. Michelle. Michelle, Michelle um, how it serves me to believe that. How does it serve me to believe that my mind is holding my, what was it? Uh, freedom freedom hostage. hostage. Because that's just a belief. It's not, it's, it's a reality because of that belief but yes. it's just a belief so how can you get the lessons the blessings how is it serving you that's what I would begin and the mind will say well it's not serving me but it is it's giving you something once you figure that out then you can ask yourself okay how can I create and experience that thing that it's giving me without needing this belief that it's holding my joy my freedom hostage that's where I would begin yeah that's really <laughs> great and um just one more final thing that just occurred to me is one of the th biggest things that holds people hostage is the fear of shame. So mm. ask yourself if that's what's holding you back. The fear of being shamed mm. by whoever, your community, your society, your tribe. And so that's what really very often prevents us from being who we truly are is because we fear being shamed. Absolutely. Mariana asks, how do you align with happy, peace, and knowing when presented with a diagnosis? So for this one, what I would like to say to you is that um, when you're presented with a diagnosis, so I'm also going to say to you here that I have a lot of videos or several YouTube videos that very specifically address this subject. So I really would like you to check out my YouTube channel. There's like three or four videos that very specifically addresses the subject that if you have a diagnosis that's making you feel fearful, um, yes, yeah, so please check out those videos. But what I want to say real quickly here <clears throat> is that one of the big um, mistakes that our medical paradigm makes is that when we have a scary diagnosis, we end up obsessing about our health. We end up obsessing about our illness. My suggestion is to um, figure out what you want to do with the rest of your life. So in other words, focus on your reason for being well. Focus on your reason for being healthy. Focus on your reason for, um, for living, for life, for living long, long and healthy life. Focus on your reason for being here. We tend to obsess about the illness even when we think that we are trying to be positive and we are trying to um, trying to set intentions for wellness. Those intentions are coming from a fear-based place of illness. So my point to you is don't even think about your health. Don't think about wellness. Don't think about illness. Get a team of people to support you in your healing journey. And to me, it doesn't matter whether you choose conventional medicine or alternative medicine or a combination just but make sure that your healthcare practitioners make you feel empowered mm -hmm. not fearful that's mm -hmm. very important mm -hmm. they have to empower you not make you feel fearful whatever choices you make in terms of the type of um, the the type of healing modality they have to make you feel empowered I as I said I have a video all about it about what I went through because when I was diagnosed the conventional medical people made me feel that I had to do conventional if I didn't do it I would die the alternative people made me feel that I had to do alternative if I took the chemo and radiation I would die and so I was caught between a rock and a hard place this is why my advice to you is always work with people 
who will make you feel empowered and the whether you choose one or the other or a combination of both is secondary to you feeling empowered by your choices that's very mm -hmm. important and to not see yourself as broken and to not, not see yourself as broken it's just an experience exactly that's a very good point and do not see yourself as failing do not beat yourself up for being sick many times people who do the work that we talk about who read these books who go to the workshops when you get a diagnosis you feel you failed in some way mm -hmm. you are not failing it's just part of the journey you're perfect it's part of the journey I am so glad I went through what I went through because it's made me who I am mm -hmm. today. It's a gift. And now you can laugh and have fun and it's, play, which you said you weren't able to do before. Exactly. I was so fearful before. I was always so fearful. Mm -hmm. So my, my heart is with you. Um, truly, you'll be fine. And please check out the videos. Yes. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Do you want to do one more? Yeah, yeah let's okay. do one more. Susan asked how... How would you help someone who projects their negative thoughts to you as if it's yours? <clears throat> Can I take this? Yes, a please. Uh, so uh, what I would say to that is, you know, everything in our reality is a mirror of us. So if we're thinking that someone is projecting something onto us, usually on some level, we're projecting that to ourself. So when or out in the world. So. I know sometimes this may be a tough pill to swallow. No, you know, you don't um, want to take responsibility for that. But it's really important to acknowledge that when you can really understand that mirror effect, then you can start to refine something. So if you are having someone project some kind of negative or thinking that you're projecting negativity on them or you're uh, receiving that from them, what happens is that's just a feedback like a loop system for you to just refine a few things how can i be more loving to myself how can i be more nourishing and kind and and uh, take time to take care of myself and as you start to build those there i call them foundations then when those types of situations do come up it won't affect you it won't trigger you as much when someone is saying oh you're being negative and or whatever or you think they're negative you won't even play in that world anymore because you're just lovingly accepting it, understanding it, and seeing that you are choosing not to internalize that. You're choosing not to make that about you or take it personally. That's something that I've used and it's really helped me. That's really excellent. And it's so true that it's, it's not about you and it's something that they're going through. And at the same time, if you are going through a phase where you're not feeling absolutely positive, just honor what you're feeling because when you honor it and you don't suppress it it'll pass mm -hmm. yeah and um yay. Yay. so we are so grateful this was so fun anita oh, i we mean we do could do this all the time oh my gosh I, we could go on forever i feel i had my laughing therapy of the day i hope the audience you guys laughed with <laughs> us and had some fun and really got some insight out of it today yeah, and I really appreciate all your questions. I love the questions yes. and, and you answered them so beautifully. And it was so synchronistic, the ones that came naturally to me, you know, there were some that just came naturally. I just wanted to answer them and there was some yeah. that you just wanted, you just reached for them. And so yes. I, I love that, how it was just so perfect. And if you know anyone that needs a good laugh or needs some cheering <laughs> up, please share the video with them. Yes, <laughs> definitely. And we hope to do more of these for you and make sure you check out Anita's um, live and, and videos and everything. I'm just so grateful that you make those available to us. And make sure you check out more about Emmanuel and, and all his amazing work. Thank love you. the stuff that you do. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Yay, okay, yay. so we love you. Yeah. Bye. Bye. <laughs>